Okay, so now we're going to talk about something which is not super common uh, for us. Certainly, we're not going to use it much, but it's really cool. We have something called high res mass spectrometry. This will help you appreciate what mass spec is, by the way. So let's talk about this in a little more detail. So high res mass spec allows the mass to charge ratio to be measured up to four decimal places. Okay, super precise. Now we've been talking in the past a uh, couple conversations as if this weighed exactly one, right? M per Z is equal to one. So we've talked about chlorine 35 in a previous conversation and said that the M per Z was 35, right? So it turns out with high res, we can get more precise in that and we can differentiate things a little more carefully, okay? But it's important to appreciate that carbon-12 is always going to be exactly carbon-12 because the AMU scale is based on the mass of carbon-12. So it's always going to be exact. Even if we had 100 decimal places, it would be 12.000000. There might be a lot more, right? So all other atoms besides carbon-12 are going to be measured to four decimal places with high res uh, mass spec. So let's look at what some of those masses are going to be. Well, we know in nature... Hydrogen shows up 99.99% as uh, hydrogen 1, and the mass of that is 1.0078. Hydrogen 2, which we call deuterium, we oftentimes write like that, deuterium, is a very small percentage in nature, right? It's vanishingly small. We usually don't see it in regular mass spec, but um, it shows up, uh, it's got a mass of 2.0141. Tritium, which shows up in nature, but it's less than 0.01% because it's not stable. It has a mass, we, we'll call it T, it has a mass of 3.0161, all right? Carbon-12, carbon-13, you get all that, right? These are all the actual masses of all the isotopes. Okay, and so it's going to be complicated, of course, but, you know, if you've got, if you've got a hypothesis in the beginning, you can use all these numbers to, to help you confirm what you thought was, was already there, right? So um, let's look at one specific application of this, and then this will, and then we can we can move on. So let's recall that the atomic weights on the periodic table are based on isotopic abundance, right? So that's they're the average atomic weights when we see them on the periodic table. A high-res mass spec allows us to distinguish between compounds that have the same molecular weight when they're rounded to the nearest AMU. So the way you've been seeing me calculate molecular weights, I would do something, look at, look at this, C5HH8O, I would do this. I would say 5, you've been seeing me do this, 5 times 12 plus 8 times 1 plus 1 times 16, right? Because I'm, I'm rounding stuff, right? So this goes to 60 plus 8 plus 16, which is equal to 60 plus 24, which is equal to 84. And this is 6 times 12 plus 12 times 1, which is equal to 72 plus 12, which is also equal to 84, right? So mass spec then, I wouldn't, with a regular mass spec, I wouldn't be able to differentiate between these two because they're both 84. I mean, we would have different fragmentation patterns and so on, but the molecular ion peak would be the same right? However, if we can go out to four decimal places, look at that, then we can tell the difference between those two. All right, hope this is helpful. I hope it helps you appreciate what mass spec is a little deeper, and uh, we'll move on to the next topic then.